So I'm sure a lot of you guys are brand new to bass fishing. Maybe this is your first season actually on the water. Maybe you went out and got you a brand new bait caster and you've got questions about a spinning rod. Or maybe you got a brand new spinning rod and you're curious about a bait caster. In today's video, we're gonna talk about some differences between the two. If you can get away with just having one or the other, or do you need to go ahead and make the investment and get a few of each? talk about the most obvious differences between a bait caster and the spinning reel. The first thing you're going to notice is the overall general size. When you look at a bait caster here, they are generally very low profile and they have really critiqued the weight of these things. They've worked for years and years trying to get these things to be just a mechanical machine to where they are very lightweight, very compact, and when you look at the spinning reels, the design of a spinning reel really hasn't changed since they came out. Now what this is going to do, it's going to allow you to store a lot more bait caster rods in the same space you'd be trying to store your spinning rods. Let's say in the average size bass boat, you could probably store between 15 and 20 full size uh, bait casting rods. In that same rod locker, you could probably only store maybe seven possibly 10 spinning reels. They're just overall bigger, clunkier, and bait casters are just more streamlined, lower weight, and uh, that's not where the differences stop. Let's go ahead, let's keep digging into some of the key factors as to why people seem to be choosing a bait caster more over the spinning reels. The benefits of a bait caster is you can actually cast faster. You can make more cast in the same amount of time. Uh, let's say you're out there on the water for an eight hour period. Case, casting a bait caster, you just simply hit the thumb release button and cast. You have a faster gear ratio reel, so you can take up that line, cast and retrieve a lot faster. In the same eight hour window, it is there is no way possible that a spinning rod would make more cast in the day versus any bait caster. So just the ability to have your lure presented in the water for a longer period of time throughout the day will guarantee you can catch more fish on a bait caster just out of the simple fact of being more efficient and making more cast. You're wanting to make the most accurate cast possible. With a bait caster, it is it is easier to make an accurate cast versus a spinning rod. How do I know this? When you look at a bait caster, the eyes on the bait casting rod are smaller than the spinning reel. If you look at the eye size, the eyes are almost three to four times bigger on a spinning reel. What the eye size does is when this line comes off of this reel on a bait caster, it is going through a smaller hole. Therefore, the line goes around in a smaller circle and is in a more direct path. It's kind of like if, you, if you've ever thrown a football and you go to throw it and you make a spiral. If your arm is in a straightforward uh, center, center motion, uh, more of a compact window and you give it a, a tighter turn, you will have a better spiral on that football. If you take the same football and you come out and you go around and make a, make a bigger, make a bigger throw, like in a spinning reel, that line is going to go around the outer edge of that, uh, out of that rod eye. You can cast accurate with a spinning rod but it is easier to learn and make more accurate cast with a bait caster. 
Also, when you're making those casts, you leave your thumb on the spool of that bait caster. And what, what that does is, when that line is leaving this reel, as you're watching your lure about to hit that water, you just simply lay your lay more pressure on your thumb you can stop that lure from actually hitting the water very hard so you can basically just lay your lure in the water when you're casting a spinning rod that line the the bell is open so that line is just coming off the only way you can stop that line is to is to trip that bell back as soon as you trip that bell that line still has a, a little bit of a, a rotation and will still continue to go forward versus in a bait caster, it will almost stop immediately. It's just a more efficient way to cast a lure on a bait caster. It's just simply more accurate. You can throw a wide range of lures on a bait caster. Where you start to draw the line is once you get about below a quarter of an ounce and under 10 pound line, that's where a bait caster is not really going to be that efficient. Uh, you're not going to want to throw eight pound line and uh, a three sixteenth weight on a bait caster. It's just, the, the, the action of the rod, it's just not going to load up. It's just not going to cast right. It's just you're, you're fighting a losing battle going with that light of a presentation on a bait caster. Now on the other end, you can go and throw heavier lures. There are certain rods that you can throw two ounce lures on. Uh, the, those, heavy, those big heavy action rods, you can throw two ounce uh, uh, lures with 60 pound line, 65 pound line, 80 pound braid, uh, just just a lot more heavier options. So, if you are looking for throwing smaller presentation lures, if you like throwing these little finesse type baits, these little uh, eighth ounce Ned heads, shaky heads on just little stick bait worms, now you can throw this presentation on a bait caster, but it's all around the weight of that lure. You can go with a lower weighted lure on a spinning rod. These are designed for six, eight, and 10 pound test. They just cast a lot better, head and shoulders better than a bait caster under 10 pound line. They are specifically designed to flex enough to throw these lighter lures around. So another big advantage to bait casting rods is the actual number of options you have when selecting a new rod. Uh, when you start looking around to buy a new bait casting rod, you're going to find that you're going to start out with a six foot six length. Inside each length, you're going to have a medium action, a medium heavy action, and a heavy action. In those three, you could also have a medium moderate tip, a medium fast tip, a medium heavy moderate action, medium heavy fast action, and then you're also going to have the heavy fast action. So within each length, you're going to have possibly five to seven rod selections. Now your rod lengths are going to be six foot six, six foot eight, six foot ten, seven foot, seven foot one, seven foot two, seven foot three, seven foot four, seven foot six, 7 foot 10, 7 foot 11, all the way up to 8 feet. Now, I don't know the math off the top of my head, but that is a lot of rod selection that you can just go in and precisely redefine the exact technique that you're wanting. You can get the exact type of bend, the exact type of power you want in each bait casting rod. And a lot of companies have tons and tons of options within that category. Now, when you go over to the same thing in a spinning rod, 
Spinning rods have a lot less options. You still have a few options, but you don't have near the number of rod selections you have when it comes to bait catchers. You go to the spinning rod section, you're going to start out with a, for bass fishing, of course, you, you they do make five foot and five foot six rods, but those are not going to really be used for uh, bass fishing. Those are smaller game fish, crappie, trout, those kind of things. Once you get into the world of bass fishing, your, your first off general length is going to start with a six foot six. In the spinning rod world, they do make a few medium heavy and heavy action rods. For the most part, spinning rods come in medium actions. They are designed for a lower weight line, a lower weight lure. Uh, so you're going to have the option to get a six foot six medium, medium heavy, and I, I don't think they make a six foot six heavy action rod. And you're not going to have the option on the uh, being able to redefine the tip, uh, the action of the tip, the moderate or fast action tip. You're going to go from a six foot six. You might be able to find a six foot ten. Then you're going to go to a seven foot rod. Then you're going to jump from a seven foot to a seven foot six rod. Just overall, a lot more rod selections in the bait casting category. Now, another reason that people will tend to lean towards spinning rods over bait casters is the overall price point of spinning reel combos. They tend to be a little bit cheaper. This right here is a is a mid level uh, uh, spinning reel. Here, this is a Shimano. It, it's a fifty dollar reel. This is a Lose Laser Speed Stick Rod. So this combo right here is an $80 combo. And honestly, that is a mid-level, a solid mid-level rod that you can do any finesse technique that there is you can do with this rod and reel setup. Now on this Baitcaster combo right here, this is a Lose LFS Speed Spool. Uh, a few years ago, this, this reel had just came out it was a hundred dollar reel and this rod is a lose Mach 1 rod. This is an eighty dollar rod. So with this combo right here, we're sitting around hundred and sixty to hundred and eighty dollars. So for a one rod combo, I'm a hundred dollars more expensive on the baitcaster combo than I am the spinning rod. And this right here would be considered a lower to mid grade combo. So what it really comes down to, guys, when you weigh out the differences between a baitcaster and a spinning rod, the baitcaster is just a more efficient tool that you can make more cast, more accurate cast, and store more rods in the same amount of space. Do you need a baitcaster to be good at bass fishing? No, you do not. There has been hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands upon thousands, of very large bass caught on spinning gear with six and eight pound test line. Now, on the other hand, you do not have to have a bunch of spinning gear to become a good bass fisherman. You can have one bait caster or you can have 50 bait casters. I feel like in today's industry, it's, it's kind of put on us to make you think that you need to go out and, and buy one of everything. You need to be a master of everything. You need to go out and just pick one and become good with that one thing. Go out and get you a spinning rod and, and get very good at throwing a shaky head worm. And once you venture out and you feel like you've got that down very good, go out and buy you a baitcaster. Here's my biggest tip if you're going to go into buying a baitcaster, guys. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to backlash. You have to learn. It's a learning process. My wife had never fished a day in her life last year. I asked her, would you like to learn how to use a baitcaster? She said, well, yeah, sure. I'm going to mess it up. I said, yeah, you're going to mess it up. But guess what? We can fix it. I had her out in the yard. In five minutes, she was casting a baitcaster. She was casting that baitcaster right there, a $100 reel. She was casting it in the yard with no backlashes in less than five minutes. I really hope that this video has helped you somehow dissect this world of 
bass fishing to help you become a better bass fisherman. Get out there on the water, guys. When you get out there, fish simple and simply catch fish.